What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And God, I can't believe we're having this conversation. But today we're talking about white Jesus. Stick around. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're here. Uh, we're talking about white Jesus. Oh my goodness. Um, there are some topics that I just, I just want to jump on right away. And this is one of them. A couple days ago, some communist Bernie bro, social justice warrior, jerk face, Sean King popped his stupid opinions onto Twitter and said that all statues of white Jesus need to come down and all stained glass windows in all churches need to be smashed if Jesus is white because Christianity is about white supremacy. <laughs> I have deliberately been avoiding topics like Black Lives Matter and cancel culture and things like that. You, I've talked in the past about how Jesus isn't a social justice warrior, um, but I wanted to talk about this one right away. I, to, I, on on uh, 1517 Facebook, I thought to go live right away with a, just an instant reaction to this. And I'm glad I didn't. Because this now, uh, the, even this many days later, is take two uh, for me because I got too heated uh, during the, the first take. So Sean King wrote, uh, responding to another tweet, uh, yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. And uh, later he said, Yes, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda. They should all come down. Now, yesterday he also tweeted that he had received 20 death threats for saying that. Today he claims 500. First of all, you're a communist and you're a social justice warrior prick. So on that alone, I call BS bull. You did not receive 500 death threats for stating that we should tear down statues of white Jesus for stating that Christianity is about white supremacy, that these are instruments of oppression. I call Absolute BS on Sean King. He did not receive 500 death threats. But if he did, if he did, then I have a message for 500 Christians. Shut up. Stop it. Stop it. We are Christianity. We are not Islam. We don't issue death threats against people who criticize our faith. We do don't. We don't. We love by serving. And yes, and Christians can get haughty and we can get snarky and we can get sarcastic and we can be crass and that's absolutely okay. But we do not issue death threats against people. So if 500 of the 2.3 billion Christians on the planet have indeed issued this jerk ass Sean King death threats, stop it. Repent, repent, repent. Because you, we're not Islam. We don't kill the opposition. We convert the opposition. The Christianity is a, a, a religion that calls us to pray for those who persecute us. And this is a form of Christian persecution. Now, but let's talk about the heart of the matter. Statues of white Jesus need to come down because Jesus isn't white. And the reason I don't take this man seriously is because in one of his other tweets, he said, even if Jesus were real, Jesus is a real historical figure. Christianity would not have taken off if Jesus were simply a myth. 
You can't have a religion that claims that someone was publicly executed and risen from the dead and not have it have it available to validate the claim. You can't say they crucified him on this day and on this day he rose again. And they're like, who are you talking about? And we know Christianity wasn't invented several centuries after the fact because from 70 AD, we have the didache the teachings of the apostles, a catechism of instruction into the Christian faith. Biblical scholars that are not Christians date the, the, the earliest gospels and some of the earliest epistles that we have as being from the first and second century. You cannot write these things within the lifespan of the people who are supposedly eyewitnesses and get away with it if they were not indeed eyewitnesses. And I know, I know, Christianity is about power and white supremacy. That's why the apostles spread Christianity. It was about power. They had none. They were killed, all of them except for John. But even John was imprisoned. They were crucified. They were flayed. They were boiled alive. They were uh, hung on posts and lit on fire to light the roads of Rome. They were fed to wild beasts in Colosseums. There was no social or economic gain to being a Christian in the first several centuries of the church. There was only social and economic loss to being a Christian. So yes, Sean King, Jesus was a real person. He was publicly crucified. And on the third day, his tomb was empty. These are facts. Now, if you want to argue about what that empty tomb means, we can have that argument. We can. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about statues of Jesus that portray him as white. So we're going to put on our critical thinking hats and we're going to talk about why art in the Western church portrays Jesus a certain way. At a base level, it's not about white supremacy. It's about fidelity to the Shroud of Turin. Because at the time, the Shroud of Turin was thought to be real. Is it? Is it not? I don't know. My personal jury is still out on the Shroud of Turin as to whether or not it's authentic or whether or not it's a forgery. But it doesn't matter because I don't need the Shroud to prove the resurrection. But it was believed that this was Christ. And so all art, you can see it in icons right down to the curl in the hair, portrayed him that way. And they... So that's why, that's why Jesus is in the Western church is painted the way he is. There's also, I don't know if you know this, Sean King, the the Eastern church, the Orthodox church, and in their uh, iconography, they portray Jesus very differently. You almost can't pin an ethnicity on Jesus because the style in which an icon is written is very unique. They're not factually accurate. They're not historically accurate. Hell, they're not even proportionately accurate sometimes, but they're not trying to be historically accurate. They're trying to confess a theological, Christological truth. And, uh, and Sean King, I don't know if you know this, Christianity exists globally. Globally. So you have African Christians. And guess what? Their artists have painted Jesus and his mother black. And you have Christians in China and Japan and Korea, and they have painted Jesus Asian. I've even seen paintings of Jesus and his mother portrayed as Native American. So while traditionally in the Western church, Jesus admittedly does look European, Christianity as a whole, Sean King, is not about white supremacy because the church Catholic, the universal Christian church that crosses all boundaries, all borders, and stretches back for 2,000 years has portrayed Christ in every ethnicity that there is on the planet. And what's cool about portraying Jesus that way is it makes it deeply personal. Is it historically accurate to portray Jesus as Native American? No. But what is the artist confessing? Jesus died for Native Americans. Is it historically accurate to portray Jesus as an African? No. But what is the artist confessing? Jesus died for Africans. Is it historically accurate to portray him as Asian? No. But what is it confessing about who Christ is? You guessed it, Sean King. Jesus died for Asians. Now, Maybe you're going to come at me and say, well, isn't it convenient that only now are you coming forward and saying 
Jesus isn't white, and we always knew that. Let's rewind 20 years. Let's go back to the dawn of the new millennium. 20 years ago, I was in high school. And this, this is a testament to the progress that we've made. I went to public school my entire life. I was in a public high school. And when I was taking art my senior year, I did a drawing of Christ on the cross in art class based off of a very, very classical piece of Christian art. A beautiful piece of Christian art that shows the humility of Christ on the cross. Is it historically accurate? No. But I did this drawing, and my art teacher encouraged me this would make a phenomenal painting. So I chose to paint it. And when I painted uh, my drawing based on this picture of a white European Jesus, well, let's let the painting speak for itself. I have it right here. Yep. That's right. I gave him dark skin. 20 years ago, as a teenager, I portrayed Jesus as a person of color. Because I loved the theological statement that the original classical piece of art made, but I wanted it to be a little bit more accurate. And as a testament of how far we've progressed. Not only was I allowed to paint this in public school, guess what? It got hung up in the end of the year art gallery because we weren't all social justice butthurt pricks back then. I caught a lot of criticism for painting that. People would come back and watch me paint it for long periods of time and the question was always the same. Why are you not painting him white? And I'd simply say, Jesus isn't white. We know he wasn't white. And you know what? Uh, here's another example. Now, this one, this is a digital painting. Oh, and I haven't touched it in a very long time, several several years. But look at this one. He's not quite as dark as he is on this picture. Uh, you One might assume I painted him white based solely on the highlights. But the midtones between the, the shadows and the highlights, obviously he is of Middle Eastern descent. And... I, as the artist, have the right to paint that. If I wanted to paint him white, I could, but I choose not to, and that's my right, my First Amendment right to not only free speech, but also free exercise of religion. Or this, as an example, this book that I published a few years ago, my little ABC liturgy book, Teaching the Historic Liturgy to Children. The only person of color that is in this book, because they're all white people, and they're white because the source material I was working from to whip this out in six weeks instead of six months, they were all white people. So it, it, the, the project needed to get done. It needed to get done fast. The source material I had had white people, and I just, for speed and time, left it. I dropped colors from the source material to, to match. But look at this page. J is for Jesus. Is he white? He's the only not white person in this book. And you know what? You go, to, go find this book on Amazon, read all of the comments, and you're going to find comments criticizing the artistic style, and I don't disagree with them. This was fast. I will criticize the artistic style of this book too. But what you will never see from these white European Christians, you will never see them criticize that I portrayed Jesus with darker skin. You will never see that. Because Christians, we don't care. The only thing that we are interested in when it comes time for us to uh, die and meet the Lord in person, the only thing we care about is putting our fingers in his hands, touching his feet, and putting our hands into his side. Those precious wounds, those marks, those scars, that's what we care about. That's it. That's it. So... I think I've presented a pretty solid case that Christianity is not, nor has it ever been, about white supremacy because there are 2.3 billion Christians on the earth now, never mind the previous 2,000 years. Never, I can't even begin to imagine historically how many Christians there have been on this earth, but the church Catholic has always portrayed Jesus according to the ethnicity of the artist portraying him. And nobody has batted an eyelash 
about it. Nobody has criticized it because we all know that Jesus was a Middle Eastern Jew, born of the house of David, that he had dark skin, that he probably had black curly hair, that he probably had brown eyes. You know what else I know about Jesus? I'm six foot two. Jesus was shorter than me. (laughs) None of that matters to Christians. What matters to Christians is that this unique son of God stepped down from his throne and incorporated into his divine nature our human nature, lived the perfect obedient life that we could not, took that obedience to the cross, and there, as perfectly obedient, bore the condemnation for my sin and for yours. And because that sin has been condemned, and the wages of that sin was death, and Jesus yielded his spirit to the Father, breathed his last, and died, the debt is paid. And it's proven by his resurrection from the dead three days later that God accepted the sacrifice as pleasing and raised him in an immortal human body. An immortal human body that can do so much more than our mortal bodies can do. Jesus can appear in locked rooms and disappear. And this mortal body can still eat, though it doesn't need to. This flesh and bone Jesus raised from the dead, glorified in his flesh by God the Father because the sacrifice pleased him so. This is Christianity. Christians, yeah, Christians in the West, we have lots of statues of white Jesus. And nobody cares because we look at it and we don't go, look at white Jesus dying for my sins. We say, look at Jesus dying for my sins. And we know that may not be what he looked like. We don't know what he looked like. The Bible gives us no description. The only description the Bible gives us of Jesus is that there was nothing about him physically that would have drawn us to him. He was a rather plain looking dude. Not impressive in the least. That's all we know. So when we look at a statue of Jesus and he's white, or we look at a crucifix with Jesus on it and he's white, or we look at a stained glass window and Jesus is white, we don't care. We're seeing the story of Jesus' life, that it is telling us what Jesus has done for us, who Jesus is, and what he gives to us. Stained glass windows are a phenomenal resource for the church because as they were originally intended to be, the poor man's Bible. The average person couldn't necessarily read, so they gave these beautiful stained glass windows so that they could see the biblical narrative, so that they could understand It's one thing to know Jesus was crucified. It's another thing to look at a crucifix. We know Jesus wasn't white. And Sean King is not calling for an end to white supremacy. He's calling for an end to Christianity. And Christians, look at me. We need to get mad. Anger is perfectly okay. The Bible says, be angry. But in your anger, do not sin. We can be angry and righteous indignation can look like flipping tables. It can look like screaming at people. It can look like fashioning a whip and beating people. That's what Jesus did in the temple. But let's keep this in its context. Jesus is God. That temple belonged to God. The money in that temple belonged to God. The tables in that temple belonged to God. And the people belonged to God. So God did with his own what he willed in righteous indignation. And Christians, we need to stand up against pricks like Sean King with righteous indignation. We need to stand up and say, absolutely not. My Free exercise of religion is protected by the First Amendment, and if push comes to shove, I will defend it with the second, you jackass. It's okay, and we need to, Christians, we need to get mad about this, and we need to stand up and say, here's the line, no far, this far and no farther. If you don't want to be in the church, that's your prerogative. Those of us on this side of the line have been saved by grace. You, sir, are damned, and it's your own damned fault. And it's okay to say that. 
We need to get judgmental. Christians, we are allowed to judge, but we judge righteously. We judge between the saved and the lost, and that's it. And inside the body of the saved, well, as the old song goes, red and yellow, black and white, They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. How many of you heard that song? Red or yellow, black or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Inside this saved group, there is neither free nor slave. There is neither Greek nor Jew. There is just brothers and sisters in Christ. And inside this group, we love each other, we serve each other, we pray with each other, we worship with each other, we repent with each other, we forgive each other, regardless of what we look like on the outside. Because God, in his infinite creative wisdom, created Adam and Eve with specific genetic information in their DNA that over time, we would flourish and vary. The fact that I am white and someone else is black or the fact that someone else is Asian or the fact that someone else is Native American or the fact that someone else is Greek or Danish. This is proof of God's brilliance, his love, and his creativity. And inside the group of the saved, we celebrate that. We celebrate that God has fearfully and wonderfully made us in such a way that some of us are white and some of us are black and some of us are Asian and some of us are Mexican and some of us are native. Some of us are... We celebrate inside the group of the saved this diversity because we know inside this group of the saved that diversity means nothing because Christ died for all all of us. And the Christian church through her art has always historically reflected that. Now, as far as the group of the lost, we pray for them. We preach the word to them. We tell them what Christ has done for them. And we preach the law to the unrepentant and the gospel to the terrified conscience. It is the will of the Father that none should perish. This is why the church has historically gone to the four corners of the earth with this gospel to tell people that Jesus died for them, that he wants to dwell with them, that he wants to wash them of their sins, that he wants to feed them with his very body and blood for the sole purpose of the forgiveness of their sins, that he wants to, on the last day, raise them up from the dead, that they too should have an immortal, imperishable body like him. And we will all be like him, not divine, but The corrupt raised incorruptible. The perishable raised imperishable. The stained and tarnished raised pure. (laughs) That's Christianity. And the history of the Christian church for anyone with half a brain knows that. So, Christians, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm done. And I am going to stand up and publicly call out these wolves in sheep's clothing who point at my religion and say, that's about white supremacy, man. You know what? There is not a, 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 an ethnic group that I personally have not spoken to, and it's always the same message. Jesus died for you. I can recall one conversation a few years ago where someone asked me what denomination I was, and I said, I'm Lutheran. And he said, wow, you talk a lot about Jesus for a Lutheran. That's literally all Lutherans cling to. (laughs) Resolve to know nothing else among you, Paul says, except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. So we need to stand up and publicly denounce Sean King. We need to call him out on his BS. We need to be educated. We need to know our history. We need to know our heritage. And I hate to say it, we need to know our doctrine. We need to know what we believe, what we teach, and what we confess. And in this political climate, when now they're not coming for Confederate soldiers, they're not coming for George Washington, they're coming for Jesus. We need to stand up and say this far and no farther. Whatever you want to do in the kingdom of the world, fine. You have no sway in the kingdom of the church. If an artist wants to portray Jesus as white, he is confessing Jesus died for white people. If an artist wants to portray Jesus as black, he is confessing Jesus died for black people. You get the point. I'm repeating myself. So Sean King, 
you're wrong. You're absolutely, unequivocally wrong. Jesus is, we get it, he's not white, but Christianity has never been about white supremacy. It's about proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified for you, Sean King. He died for you. He came to forgive you of your sins. But if you are going to continue on this path, then anathema to you. You are outside of salvation. Repent and believe the gospel. And join us in the kingdom of the saved where we celebrate the incredible creative diversity of our Savior. And if you are a Christian and you are racist, you're wrong. You are absolutely, fundamentally wrong. We do not hate based on skin color. We do not hate based on skin color. The fearfully and wonderfully made clause of the scripture does not apply only to whites. It does not apply only to blacks. It applies to all of us. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My wife, who is more Native American, is fearfully and wonderfully made. My children, who are Native American and Italian, are fearfully and wonderfully made. People of color are fearfully and wonderfully made. Asian people are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you have a pulse and breath in your lungs, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you're a Christian that disagrees with me on that, then anathema to you. Repent. Repent. Racism has no place in the Christian church. It never has, and it never will. Now, there are examples in history of where Christians have been racist, but again, the church Catholic has always stood up and put an end to it. We have always stood up and put an end to Christians as individuals who go astray. We have always corrected them and called them to repentance, and we will continue to do so. So, Sean King, you're wrong. The church is about grace, life, and salvation, not white supremacy and power. It is about love through service, not white supremacy and power. And if you're a racist Christian, you're wrong too. I hope to God on high that this is the last time I have to have this conversation, but I'm sick and tired of it. I am done. I am done. And I am going to stand up and I am going to get angry and I am going to get loud and I am going to defend my faith. And I will defend an artist who wants to portray Jesus as white. And I will defend an artist who wants to portray him as black. I will defend an artist who wants to portray him as any ethnic group on the face of this earth. Because what that artist is confessing is that Jesus is for everybody. There's not a person alive that Jesus isn't for. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.